Okay, so I think that one's the shortest one. 41.7 megabytes, followed by 209 megabytes, followed by 76.3 megabytes. So we will start with the draft of the recording where we were trying to condense the facts. So I thought this would go more straightforward. Play. Fine. Finish. Okay. And I can't hear it. First, we would like to inform you on some things that maybe has left out of the past. This information is available to everyone, even through the internet. So while you're out there farming, take a second and look some of this stuff up, please. Sadly, our media has failed to cast light on these facts and instead has chosen to sensationalize the virus known as the H1N1 or the Swan Indian. Okay, so this one is the The reason to report this could be that many epidemiologists have said confirmed cases are meaningless and may actually be. The reasoning for this could be that many epidemiologists have stated that confirmed cases are meaningless and may actually be higher since laboratories have been overwhelmed with testing for the H1N1. Or is the reasoning that this isn't as severe a threat as we were led to believe? not to take the suspicious H1N1 vaccine, you cannot be forced into taking it, at least according to the Nuremberg Code, which has been incorporated into individual states' laws, including California's. The Nuremberg Code was created just after World War II war crime trials and establishes a protection over our rights as humans to voluntarily consent and exercise our power of choice without interfering in coercion. This prevents fraud, deceit, force, or threat on the government's part. Also, the experimental subject must know all inconveniences and hazards reasonable to be expected. The experiments must be carried out only by scientifically qualified persons. But this does not mean that governments will not break the law. So that was, um, that was supposed to be edited into a uh, video. It wasn't fully edited, but I believe the intellectual property falls upon my lap. So, yeah. Let's go with the next one. And uh, we'll finish with the other one in a different video. First, we would like to inform you on some things the media has left out in the past few months. This information is available to everybody, even through the internet. So while you're on... <laughs> First, we would like to inform you on some things the media has left out in the past few months. This information is available to everybody, even through the internet. So... 
So while we reply, we'll take a second to look this stuff up. Sadly, our media has failed to cast light on these facts and has instead chosen to sensationalize a little known virus. <laughs> What's the camera's on? It's different. Yes, I know. You want me to just uh, say my parts too? Or. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we can just edit me out. <laughs> First, we would like to inform you on some things the media has left out in the past few months. This information is available to everybody, even through the internet. So while you're toiling, take a second to look this stuff up. Sadly, our media has failed to cast light on these facts and has instead chosen to sensationalize a little virus called the N1H1, better known as the swine flu. The spotlight was first cast on the subject in April 2009, but it's speculated to have begun earlier in Mexico. On June 11, 2009, the H1N1 virus was declared a level 6 pandemic. Less than a month later, the World Health Organization posted a briefing note on its website stating that they no longer place importance on tracking the H1N1 virus. The reasoning for this could be that many epidemiologists have stated confirmed cases are meaningless, and laboratories have been overwhelmed with testing for the N1H1 H1N1 virus. The reason for this could be that many epidemiologists have stated confirmed cases are meaningless, and laboratories have been overwhelmed with tests. <laughs> Okay, for okay. The reasoning for this... <laughs> I knew that was coming. Right. Okay, go. The reasoning for this could be that many epidemiologists have stated that confirmed cases are meaningless, and laboratories have been overwhelmed with testing for the H1N1 virus, so actual cases may be higher. Or is the reasoning that this is not a severe threat, as we would like to believe, to add to the confusion, on August 28, 2008, eight months prior to any signs of the H1N1, Baxter International, a pharmaceutical manufacturer, filed for a patent with the U.S. government for an H1N1 vaccination. The government has expressed such concern that they have scheduled mandatory vaccinations as early as September 2009. Who gets the shot first? As of mid-August 2009, the government will be taking volunteers to test for clinical trials of the H1N1 vaccine. Then they will test the elderly, the babies, and children. By September, a mandatory vaccination campaign will begin where pregnant women will be the priority patients. But before you line up to volunteer, let us tell you about Baxter National, one of the five confirmed pharmaceutical companies that's manufacture the H1N1 vaccine. August 28, 2008, application for a patent was granted on March 5, 2009, blah, 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 blah. Do you really want to risk blah, 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 blah. Death and 200,000 cases we mentioned at the beginning of this video, which in fact is the regular seasonal flu. If you choose not to take the suspicious H1N1 vaccine, you cannot be forced into taking it, at least according to the Nuremberg Code, which has been incorporated into individual state laws, including California's. The Nuremberg Code was created just after the World War II war crime trials, and it protects our rights as humans to fall. The Nuremberg Code was created just after the World War II war crime trials. It protects our rights as humans to voluntarily consent and exercise our free power of choice without interfering with religion. This prevents fraud, deceit, and force. Uh, all right, can we uh, can we slow us down? And, sure. And, uh, Alright, um, that'll be it for now.